Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. So I've been working on the serpentine chest of drawers for uh, a little bit too long, I think. I am you know, mentally done with this for now, so I'm looking for something you know quick, like a quick little side project to, to knock out while I mentally get back into all of this. So today, a little bit of fun. I'm going to do something fairly quick and still productive. A good combo. <laughs> so up front we have this little bench that came with the house. It uh, could use some new slats. It's actually missing one anyway. So you know, a fairly quick project today. Make some slats for this thing and you know make it not so <laughs> not, not so falling apart. So the slats on here are about four feet long and they're maybe five eighths of an inch thick or so and maybe like two and a half inches wide. So let's go find some stock for this. So out here in the barn is where I keep uh, some of my material. There's my collection of boards and things. I think this stuff over here is going to work out pretty nicely for this. This is some white oak. It happens to be quarter sawn because it was from towards the center of the log. This was a rotted out log. So you can see the middle of the log would have been right here, totally gone. And then I have this piece and the piece behind it, which I think will work out just fine for this. I should be able to get all the slats out of these two pieces because I can resaw this into a few slats. So this stuff came out of a log I cut a few years ago. That was the rotted out white oak log or something like that. It was a fun exploration of how much material you can actually get out of a log which has completely rotted out. And now oh, look at this. <laughs> One of the very first boards ever cut on my sawmill. <laughs> So I'm going to bring these chunks of white oak into the shop. And while I'm doing that, uh, we'll jump back in time and do a little bit of highlights of cutting this log. But this side's got some pretty heavy ray fleck from that quarter saw. It's like a tiger. <laughs> a lot of ray fleck on that one. So it might be a little bit uh, close trying to get all my slats out of these two pieces. This ruler is the size of a slat, it's, uh, two inches by 48. So if I lay this on here, I want to remove this kind of crack area here and flip it this way. I'm getting kind of close out in here where this rod is, so uh, we'll see. Hopefully it'll be all right. In theory, these things are a little over two and a quarter inches thick, so I should be able to get three slats out of the thickness. So if I get 100% yield out of this, this will produce six, and I should be able to produce another six, in theory, out of this one. But uh, again, this, is, this one's probably going to be close as well. So I have the potential to produce 12 slats, but uh, we'll see. Or I'll produce 12 and pick the best seven. It's uh, I'm not, not super worried about it. So with that rough idea in mind, I'll make my quick cross cuts to separate my two big chunks and then draw on some kind of straight edge somewhere. That seems to make sense. Get a straight line cut on there, rip them to that rough width. And then I guess we'll see what resawing them. So here's our rough blocks, sort of ready to go. I think uh, I'm gonna actually resaw these first and then rip them into the individual strips versus trying to rip like a blank out of here and then rip those into the, all the strips. Uh, that way, as I'm heading down through here, if the rot starts to kind of disappear as you get further down there, I'll have more width to kind of work with if like one edge isn't as good or something like that. Uh, another thing I could do was just come in here and just rip the strips off the edge but I do want, I'm feeling a little crazy. I want to have the quarter saw look in the slats because uh, it seems ridiculous for a bench. <laughs> so going for 
we're going for the quarter sun look and, and it's going to be a little more work. But uh, this is kind of junky wood anyway, so I'm not super, super worried about it. For instance, this guy here is probably not going to produce any slats on this bottom face. I'll probably only get one or maybe two layers out of it, so you know, I'm not super duper worried. So I'm just going to give these a quick skim over the jointer just to clean up one face. I'll probably plane the other side too just to clean it up as well. And then um, just head up with the bandsaw and start resawing. It's going to be a little close, I think, to try and get three pieces out of here, but I don't think it should be too bad. We should be okay. We'll see. I say that now. We'll, we'll see. Who knows? So it looks like I ended up with eight strips. I'll probably end up kicking out maybe this one or this one. We'll see. It's not, yeah, we'll see. The, uh, the other ones here end up a little too thin. So that's all right though. I should be all right with the strips that I do have and uh, we can go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start finishing these up. We'll get them cut to length and uh, time to do some sanding. And I'll do a little edge profile. I think I'm just going to do a very simple eighth inch round over on all sides and the ends just to soften things up a bit. And that, that's basically it for the woodworking. This is, uh, this is great. <laughs> nice and quick. The progression on this is great. This is a nice quick thing and uh, I'm feeling a little more rejuvenated. So the finish on these slats, since they're ready to go, we're gonna use Total Boat's Teak Oil. And when you're thinking of outdoor finishes, there's two sort of sides to this. You can go with a finish that is gonna require more frequent maintenance, but will have very easy maintenance when you have to do it. Or you go to the other side of things where you apply a finish that doesn't require a lot of maintenance but when you have to actually refinish it, it's a lot more work. So the way I like to kind of decide which way to go is how complicated the project is in the refinishing phase. So if there's a lot of like inside corners and just a lot of complexity in the project, refinishing something like that, stripping all the finish off of it, sanding it and reapplying, gonna be a, a project that I'm not looking forward to and I probably never will do. <laughs> so that finish will fail and it'll look terrible forever. <laughs> but on the other side of things, if it's something you can just slap on a new coat of oil every season and it's not a big deal, that, that's probably a little better for a more complicated project. For something that's easy to refinish, a big flat area, uh, for instance, these slats, they come off the bench. Uh, you can take this off and refinishing an individual slat wouldn't be that bad. So really this could be a good project for a film finish, but I'm still gonna use a teak oil just because it's a little bit easier and I'm just kind of, I know myself. I don't really think I'll pull this apart and bring in the shop and strip varnish off and refinish it, but I'll walk up there and just brush on a coat of this every year. That's not a problem. <laughs> so let's, uh, 
Let's get some finish on these things and see uh, see how they're gonna look. That's probably a lot. <laughs> now one of the things you'll see with wood that's outside on an outdoor project, the first kind of area that's going to uh, suffer the most amount of wear is gonna be the end grain. So if you wanna go super crazy, a good way to do this would be to coat the ends of all your boards with an epoxy or something that will seal those end fibers and keep them from uh, absorbing and releasing water which causes them to crack and split. I'm just gonna <laughs> soak the ends of these boards in the teak oil to make sure I get a lot of uh, penetration into the ends. It's, it's gonna be pretty. <laughs> Give it a flip. Now the nice thing about this uh, finishing technique is it doesn't really require, let's say, skill. <laughs> you just flood the stuff on the surface and basically let the wood drink up whatever it wants to. Also gives us a good chance to put a nice fresh coat of finish on the assembly table. <laughs> nice and messy. All right, I can do the, uh, the next batch here. Ugh. Drink up. So these look pretty promising. I will uh, well, I'll let them sit overnight and we'll see how they look tomorrow. I put this coat on fairly heavy, so we'll see if we need a second coat, but at this point with the wood being as thirsty as it is, second coat's probably not a bad idea. I think this one's my favorite because it's got this crazy swiggly grain. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> So it is, uh, it's pretty good. I think it's maybe just a little kind of dry looking still. So I'm going to give it one much lighter coat than the last one. Since I don't need a whole lot of build, I just want to just make sure it has as much oil as it could possibly take at this step. And, uh, and that should be really about it for the, the woodworking part of this fairly quick project. Stuff's looking really nice though. So that made a really nice difference. The finish is a little more uniform now. And uh, there's probably about as much oil in there as uh, it will take. I did have to wipe down some of the excess after about half an hour. But these are looking pretty good. Let's go tear down the, uh, the old bench and get these ridiculous things installed. So I'm thinking for uh, these slats here, I'm actually going to reuse this hardware because I really like the patina on here. This bench was uh, definitely painted red at some point. Whoever painted the slats got some paint on the, uh, the, the metal pieces here on the ends, the castings. So there's a little bit of like red paint on here too. So I think the, uh, the patina on the cast pieces is going to match up nicely with this kind of fun patina on these bolts. This makes a big difference. <laughs> it's, that's crazy how much nicer it looks now.
So that is an incredible difference. I'm, I'm really liking this patina look up against the white oak. I think it looks kind of nice. It's maybe a little drastic right now, but as the wood you know, ages a little bit, it'll mellow out a bit and it'll kind of blend together a little bit better. But, and that ray fleck on here, it's nice. So quite a bit nicer. It's gonna be a, a nice look as people pull up to the house now. Just, you know, instead of that one that was falling apart, this thing's actually pretty darn comfortable. One of the things to keep in mind when you're doing a bench like this with uh, slats is you don't want the slats to be too thick because they'll make them really stiff. You want them to have some flexibility in them so when you sit in it, it actually conforms to your body a little better makes it a lot more comfortable. And one thing's for certain, I cannot count because I totally thought there were seven slats required for this. I made an extra one just so I had one to kind of throw away. And uh, I actually do need eight slats to do this whole bench. So at least that kind of worked out in my favor. I made an extra one just in case. Uh, apparently just in case I forget that I can't count. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is pretty good for a, you know, mostly rotten out log. You know, there's still some really good material in that log and it worked out really nicely, especially with this nice quarter sun green on here. And this quick project was really nice to feel a little more reinvigorated to get back in the shop and work on something a little more complicated. This quick projects like these really just help to help things kind of flow. <laughs> it's just a little bit more. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the bench or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.